Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to our six minute strategy and a very happy new year from me, Guy Munson, at Saracen and Partners. As we said in our last report, a return to normality was never going to be easy after nearly a decade of super loose money. 2022, I'm afraid, illustrated this all too clearly with the US Federal Reserve lifting rates seven times, four of them supersized 75 basis point moves. The result for investors was anything but plain sailing, as you know well. All major asset classes declined and global balanced accounts suffered particularly as bonds and equities fell in tandem. The first time we've seen this on anything like this scale in nearly 30 years. As we enter 2023, there is some light at the end of the tunnel though. US core consumer prices are down from a peak of 6.6% in September to 6% today, which suggests that central bank policy is finally gaining traction. This echoes developments elsewhere, with German and French inflation rates also falling, alongside sharp declines in oil and gas prices from the early days of the war. We may then be past the peak of the great inflation shock, but rising labour costs and sticky prices suggest that getting back to central bank target levels will not be easy. So investors have a delicate balancing act in 2023, navigating between the scylla of global recession and the charybdis of renewed inflation on the other side. It will take strong nerves, ample reserves of patience, and the ability to act quickly when opportunities arise, especially with the twin challenges of a possible escalation in the Ukraine conflict and the traumatic reopening of the Chinese economy. Most importantly, though, managers need a clear eye on the longer term goal, namely the steady accumulation at the right price of equities that will be at the core of the new world order. Whether it's renewing the world's energy and transport infrastructure automating factories and farms, or capturing a new wave of emerging market growth, it's an extraordinary time to accumulate long-term thematic exposure. But investors must remain wary of overzealous central bankers for just a while longer. So let's begin by looking at our regular chart of asset class performance for full year 2022. And you can see on the left, it's not a pretty picture. Gold just about broke even. Every other asset class declined sharply. Global equities down 18%, gilts down 23%, and NASDAQ down an extraordinary 33%. As that green bar, US interest rates ratcheted up to 4.5%, putting pressure on all asset classes. What I've done, though, is pull out the fourth quarter performance in that right-hand panel, and you can see a very different picture. Yes, you didn't make money in gilts or NASDAQ, but it was a much more stable picture. Global actuaries actually rebounded encouraging by almost 10%, flattened a little bit by the US dollar, but a very different picture. So what are the factors that are going to determine market performance in 2023? Well, the biggest challenge is that Mr. Powell at the Federal Reserve is still facing very tight US labour markets, and that's pushing up wage growth. You can see on the right hand a panel, probably the best measure, the Atlanta Fed wage tracker rising at 6.5%. On the left hand panel, you can see the problem. Mr. Powell's got 164 million available labour supply, but if you look at labour demand, that's employment and job openings, it's 169 million. Now, those job openings are coming down a bit, but that's a big gap to squeeze. And in the FOMC minutes, which came out this week, you can see how worried the members are about this labour problem. Participants observed the labour market remained very tight, with unemployment rates near a historical low level, robust payroll gains, a high level of job vacancies, and elevated nominal wage growth. So if central banks continue to worry and continue to squeeze, the risk is they over-tighten and in doing so trigger a deep recession. Now you can see what happens to earnings in a recession in that left-hand bar. I've shown the earnings growth rate one year forward for global equities and I've shown recessions in those deep yellow bars. Now you can see back in 2002, in 2008 and in 2020, those steep drawdowns. Today analysts are expecting earnings to be up 13% that could reverse very sharply. Similar message on the right, I've looked at corporate margins near a peak this year at around about 16%. Again, we've seen in previous recessions that fall sharply. So you can see our worries for a while longer that central banks might be too hawkish. Let's wrap up though with some good news, which I think will encourage markets in the longer term. First of all, the energy news is very good. 
uh, with crude oil Brent down at $78. It's actually lower than where we started at the beginning of the year, despite the invasion of the Ukraine. Extraordinary. And particular impact has been on Russian oil. You can see that that Urals blend in blue, which did trade along with Brent, has now opened a massive discount, is trading at just $42. You can see the successful pressure that the Europeans and Americans have put on Russian energy. On the right hand side, the other piece of good news is German and UK natural gas prices are down really sharply in reflection of, of course, warm, warm uh, winter weather, but also some very good energy conservation and LNG imports across the region. That's really encouraging, particularly for Mr. Sunak's budget. Fourthly and finally, of course, last year saw the dollar correct. This is helpful. It's not a big move yet, but if it continues, it injects liquidity particularly into Asia and emerging markets. On the right-hand panel, you can see world equities in red and emerging equities in blue, and you can see that sharp underperformance of emerging equities. We think that might be coming to an end, and tentatively and slowly, and with an eye on risk, we will be adding to emerging equity exposure all through 2023, building that exposure up with the weaker dollar and the beginnings of a rebuild in Asian trade as China reopens. So let's wrap this up. We're neutral on bonds, underweight equities for a while longer, deploying where appropriate portfolio insurance, excited by emerging markets, we're overweight on correlated alternatives, and we have a neutral position in cash. So patience, please, central banks are not quite finished, but the opportunities in the year progresses are out there. Thank you.